Hello, hello to you, my fellow printer dweebs. You're very welcome to another community news episode from 3D Jake. All the news from the community and what's going on with us too. I'm joining you from the 3D Jake office in the center of Graz in southern Austria, a city that is really well known for its extreme cases of seasonal affective disorder. Here's what's going on in 3D printing right now. All right, as always, we start with what is going in the shop. And now we have the Anycubic Cobra S1 combo ready for pre-orders. This is Anycubic's first Core XY printer and aims to dethrone the X1 as king of multicolor printers. It is very similarly sized to the X1. The max speed is 600, acceleration is 20K. It has a heated bed up to 120 degrees and the max hot end temperature is 320 degrees, which is interesting. It also has a carbon filter and you can upgrade it to the Ace Pro, the Anycubic Color Engine Pro. This is their version of the AMS. I'm just finished testing it this week and we should have a first look video next week, so stay tuned for that. We also got the Uniformation GK3 and Pro printers. These are 16K resin printers with a light source of 385 nanometers instead of the normal 405 nanometers. This shorter wavelength actually has a lower penetration of the light into the resin, meaning there is less scattering and your edges should be cleaner. It also has a heated vat and a resin feeding system. I think of late there has been a bit of a lull in resin printer features. I like this though. We're getting, we're getting nice pretty things. We're also getting Creality's new high printer and the high combo. I guess they're going for a happy, friendly look for their printers now. It looks quite similar to the recent Ender models uh, with a unicorn nozzle, relatively low acceleration of 12K, but a massively powerful one kilowatt AC heated bed. If that's pretty nuts for a 260 millimeter heated bed. Distinct sounds to keep you informed. A built-in buzzer. I don't get this printer. We are also soon to have Frozen's new Ceramic Pro resin, which is 70% ceramic. It's heat resistant up to 280 and has a flexural strength modulus of over 10,000 megapascals, which makes it a resin that is very, very resistant to bending. Both of these qualities make it a very interesting choice for injection molding. That's what they're going for with this resin. So you can design something, uh, you can print it and use that as a mold without sending your design to a machine shop, getting it machined out of metal, which reduces the turnaround time significantly. This is a very interesting resin. We also got a ton of G-Tech filament, like, like loads. Uh, right now their standard resin is 1599 per kilo. And we also have an ABS matte PLA, PTG PLACF, Glow, Silk, Sparkly, Wood, and TPU. You want another massive range of filament to check out? Here it is. Okay, that is shop stuff out of the way. Next up is... I would love to have one community news where we don't talk about Bamboo Lab, but that's never going to happen. Okay, let me just prepare myself mentally with this Bamboo Lab Super Tack build plate. If you're not aware, last week Bamboo Lab notified their users that they are introducing a new security update for X series printers to begin with that will lock out all third party control. This means Orca Slicer, the BTT Panda Touch, uh, X1 Plus firmware, and Bamboo Lab Home Assistant will no longer be compatible, with the partial exception of Orca Slicer being able to connect with the printer and send jobs uh, via Bamboo Lab's new bamboo connect tool. Now, a lot of users might not take issue with this, but there are definitely a lot who do. Uh, in the office here, we use Orca Slicer to control all of our printers, and we're very, very happy to use Orca Slicer. It's a very powerful, a very convenient tool to use with a bunch of printers. Um, and to others who are using Orca Slicer for connecting to their Bamboo Lab printers, uh, I'm sure this is at least uh, disappointing news. Now, Bamboo Lab did sort of backtrack a little and announced an optional LAN and developer mode, but that hasn't really quelled the reaction. It seems the situation is still developing, even in the last few hours, actually. Um, and I'm recording this on Tuesday 21st, so by the time this goes online on Thursday, things might have changed. There is also a ton of stuff to say about this topic and... To mention everything would make this a very long video, and this is supposed to be a bite-sized episode. So I'm not going to elaborate further, but I am going to link the Bamboo Lab posts down below as well as some reactions to it. If you are a Bamboo Lab user, I would highly recommend you to inform yourself of these changes. Like I said, situation is still developing. Let's just see how it goes. 
In other news, Creality are partnering with Coprint. Uh, so Coprint have been around for a couple of years and are well known for their uh, multicolor systems for Marlin and Clipper. Creality are partnering to bring Coprint's KCM set to the Ender 3 V3 and the Plus variant. So not the CFS, Creality's new AMS type multicolor device. Um, and this was complicated before using the KCM set with the Ender 3 V3 and other Creality printers because the touchscreen was not compatible. So now there is going to be a Creality firmware that makes the KCM set compatible with those printers, which I think is awesome. But it is also interesting uh, because we still haven't heard much noise about the CFS for the K1 series. It was announced a while ago, but we haven't really heard anything. There's just been occasional uh, toutings of it in the last few months. All we know is that it's happening soon, but I think it's cool that Creality are partner with Coprint to bring multicolor to the V3 and V3+. Plus. Another new development is the Vertigo Mark 1, which was previously called the Avore Off printer. And we mentioned this briefly in another community news video quite some time ago, uh, but someone mentioned it on the Discord and I thought it looked really cool, the new version. And if you're wondering why it was called the Vore Off, this is why. So yes, this printer does have an auto ejection feature. And of course, the first question I asked myself was, wouldn't it be infinitely easier if we just add NG code in the slicer that moves the printhead down at the end of the print and then just pushes off the print at the end? A lot of people are doing that right now. There's no hardware changes, just simple few lines of G code, right? Well, what this printer does differently is that it has built-in scrapers to get right under the printed part, which makes it far more reliable for large and flat prints, like for instance, a Hueforge print. And it also has force sensors so it can detect if there is too much resistance for the scrapers to safely remove the print, which then cancels the ejection sequence. And the devs are currently working on a way to retry the ejection sequence in a safe manner instead of simply canceling it. The printer also has fans under the heated bed for three times faster cooldown, and these fans also act to circulate heat from the heated bed into the build chamber to heat it more efficiently. It is also suitable for MMUs as it has a filament cutter built into the printhead. The Kickstarter launched last week, and while the campaign is still going, they have already reached their goal. This is a very, very cool looking printer. Lastly, I am very happy to say that we are working hard on getting Prusa printers added to the shop. Yay! So that means the Mark IV S, the Core 1, the SL1S Speed, uh, the MMU3, and the XL will hopefully soon be added to our assortment, which is, in my professional opinion, f***ing awesome. There are so very few European manufacturers, and I am very excited about this. Okay, that about does it for this month. As always, links to everything are down below in the description. And we have a community news channel on our Discord server. So if you want to discuss anything that was brought up today, you can there. You can also share your own stories. Uh, we'll be back with a video uh, next week. So tune in then. And in closing, dear friends, I leave you with some footage of a first layer test from the AnyCubic Cobra S1. Enjoy.